So investors fundamentally are looking, when they price risk, to reference some known benchmark, some investment which they have made previously or a type of investment which is familiar. What they then do is they will try and extrapolate from that the key features in the new investment which is proposed and assess whether that means that they are taking greater or lo lower levels of risk than they have done on the benchmark. That then means that they can refer to the price that they used for the previous benchmark and they can set their cost of capital appropriately. Investors use something called a hurdle rate, typically, which is composed of the, the underlying cost of their own capital plus a premium which relates to the perceived riskiness of the investment. So the best way of looking at this is to say that investors fundamentally are trying to pull everything back to the known benchmark and then adding or subtracting a return level in order to, to compensate for the additional risk on the new investment which is being undertaken. However, having arrived at that theoretically correct level of return for the given investment, we also have to remember that all investors are operating in a marketplace where capital is either more abundant or more scarce. And of course the pricing of the capital varies dramatically to take account of that. And as an example, at the moment we are seeing very, very dramatic competition for, particularly for operational renewable assets in, in Europe. And when you talk to investors, many of them are lamenting the, uh, the fact that at the moment the cost of providing equity to those projects is dramatically lower than it was, say, five or ten years previously. And that's purely a function of the greater availability of capital there is more money competing to buy into a smaller number of projects. So you have the theoretical, but you also have the real market-driven approach. And pricing risk is, is fundamentally a, a blend of the two. It's part science and part art. Both risk and reward are changing dramatically and rapidly as the renewable sector matures. On the risk side, um, it's changing rapidly as a result of a combination of factors and there, there's a huge number of those, but fundamentally it's technology driven. We have ever cheaper renewables being deployed in many or most electricity systems, which has the, the benefit of, of um, bringing in lower cost decarbonized generation in a way that would have been unthinkable probably 10 years ago. As the renewable industry matures, both risk and return are changing, and they are both changing very, very rapidly. On the risk side, we're seeing an emergence of much greater quantity of lower cost renewable ele electricity feeding into the grid in ways that were not considered possible 10, 15 years ago. If you think back to the classic grid structure of the 1960s or 1970s, you had large centrally dispatched power stations controlled by one system operator. Now we have many, many more generation units and the prevalence of lower cost software solutions allows those to interact in ways that would not have been possible even five years ago. That is leading to greater flexibility on the system but it's also leading to much greater volatility in terms of the cash flows that investors can expect. Renewable energy projects are becoming much more familiar to investors and indeed the underlying technological risk in most cases has reduced quite significantly from the early days. At the same time, the revenue risks relating to the, m those projects is in many cases increasing. We are now seeing a move in most developed jurisdictions away from the predictable feed-in tariff structure to a, a situation where projects have to rely much more heavily on traded revenues. They are merchant in nature and that leads to far greater volatility, a much more short-term nature of the cash flows and also by definition a move away from that long-term predictability which investors were originally seeking in the sector. Returns, meanwhile, are 
under pressure in the opposite direction. There is a considerable competition among providers of capital currently for attractive projects. And this is putting pressure on returns, driving them much lower than we would have seen perhaps five years ago. And I think there's a great example of that in offshore wind, where arguably, unlike many of the other renewables technologies, we are actually seeing technological risk starting to increase as the projects go out into deeper water and use ever larger turbines. Perversely, however, a lot of the investors who were active in the sector, let's say five years ago, are now being forced to accept lower levels of return at exactly the same time as they are actually taking arguably greater risks on those projects. And that is purely a function of the pressures, the competitive pressures on, on cost of capital. So in summary, it, it has to be said that this is arguably a very good time to be raising money for projects and a much less great time if you're providing capital for them.